G'day folks, my name's Hector. I'm just going to uh, do a little bit of filming of uh, me doing an experiment, basically, where I'm going to put some reeds from a big size button accordion into a smaller size button accordion. I'm going to start by taking the reeds out of this CG diatonic accordion and placing them into this smaller toy one. And the reason why I'm doing this is because the toy one has cheaper materials for the reeds and it's gone a little bit out of tune. And I've got two CG accordions, so I basically thought, well, it's worth a try. I haven't actually done this before, but uh, I've got myself a soldering iron and a um, little piece of beeswax uh, to put the reeds back in. And uh, let's get inside the box. Uh, right, eh? so um, now you've seen me play this, folks. It's just my little KFC. Um, and I'd like to put some real Melodian reeds in. Well, this will be probably interesting for folks that haven't seen inside. Right, so we take the four pins out. We've got ourselves a reed block. And there are the reeds. It just so happens these bellows don't come off this side of the accordion. You can see the base reeds. Now, in all honesty, folks, I have had a go at trying to do this, and I was trying to install some uh, piano accordion reeds, and of course, the ins and outs of things are a bit different. Screw the red block. And my aim is to replace those reeds with some real reeds and uh, hopefully play a reel. The tool I'm using, folks, is a um, just a little, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, folks. Anyway, it's quite handy. Um, so, alternatively, you know, a pair of pliers can do equally as good a job. Yeah, so normally, folks, I wouldn't dare pull an accordion apart, but um, my Bussolatio is a CG and this Hona is a CG and it's just uh, sitting in the cupboard. It's perfectly good reeds. There are the two rows there. And um, I thought, well, I'll have a bit of a go. Um, this was $15 Australian, toy millennium. And as far as I'm concerned, if I don't, uh, if I be careful, um, it's an operation that's basically reversible. Right, okay, folks, so I'm just making sure I've got the right reed block. Um, it's basically like a harmonica. So, um, and in fact I do, because the inner row is C, and as you can see, which means that hole there is a um, C. So folks, yeah, they're both the C reeds on the blow, and the same ones are the D on the draw, or the pull. And as you can see, there's a reed block there, and a reed block, uh, reed there. And there's two of them, they're tuned very similar, and that's where you get the tremolo. And this, folks, um, the C is at the start. The lower note's the bigger reed, obviously, and uh, same sort of deal. And yeah, the first button is the C. Oh no, so I've got the uh, soldering iron heating up. My well, dad has kindly lent me some beeswax. So dad, you got beeswax? He said, uh, you know, mind your own beeswax. That's it there. Looks like a cake of soap. Um, when you buy a melodeon or got an accordion, quite often you can see that the beeswax is around there. Um, quite often it's mixed with uh, rosin, which is what you rosin the bow with for a violin. And um, just thought I'd grab a little bit extra so I can uh, make sure that the reed is sealed in. I'm trying to keep these in order in case I do have to uh, reverse the operation. Well, they say you learn something every day, and that is for sure. Now, I've written C E G C because that forms the chord, and um, I found out that that's the C there. And that's the D, which is obviously on the pull. So that's E, that's F, and likewise exactly on the other side. That's the inside scoop. Well, as it turns out, folks, and it comes to no surprise, but um, the uh, bigger recording has bigger reads, and um, I've had to improvise and um, make it fit. So you don't want, they've got to vibrate, so you don't want stuff sitting on those. So I've carved out a little section there. Oh, this um, grey matter, so to speak, is um, my failed attempt last time round. 
But as long as it's sealed and the air can go up through there and blow in, blow in and out of the reed. And then I just got to make sure that it's sealed. So uh, life's full of challenges, but uh, yeah, aren't you glad it's not your accordion? I'm basically going to uh, seal the reed in there. A bit more beeswax. And then, uh, naturally enough, seal that top there. Now, of course, the question is, is this all going to work? Of course, there's a few holes up there which I aim to uh, glue up later. Well, I've got most of the, the big size reeds on, on there. Now I've got to put the same again on the other side. And yeah, because it's a big reed, to bust a bit out so the actual reed fits so the little uh, reeds can uh, vibrate. And uh, life's all about having a go, I guess. And of course one has to be careful that there's no little fragments that get stuck under the reed when it plays. Now I don't play jazz on my accordion, but anything similar is uh, what I'm doing here is basically improvising. Right, eh? well this is the last reed. And yeah, the reason why I'm not using candle wax, folks, is that uh, it has a lot higher melting temperature than beeswax. Well, it won't melt in the normal sun, but um, extreme heats it might in front of a heater. And this is the AC reed. And um, being vigilant as far as marking all the, where the reeds have uh, come from there. And uh, yeah, where was I? But they come out very easy, folks, and uh, slot back in. I'm going to go over them again with a bit more beeswax. But just roughly getting them in, like so. Yeah, it's certainly been a challenge. I'm really hoping that this will work. Naturally enough, if you get to see this video, then uh, yes, it has. Not to give anything away, but I am hoping that it will work. And yeah, as I said later on, I'll seal up those little extension. Right, eh? All reeds are in. All uh, labelled. <coughs> uh, now I've got some of this um, two-part... It's like aerodite, but it's a kneaded. And I'm aiming to... It's like a putty. And I'm aiming to uh, seal those gaps up. As I said before, it's like jazz. You know, you've got to improvise a bit. And uh, that's what I've done. I'm quite confident, folks, if I get them sealed without getting wax and so forth on the reeds. And uh, as I said, yeah, candle wax isn't any good. Uh, it just melts and runs and sets on the reeds. I haven't quite done it. Right, oh, no, folks, just got a little bit of beeswax and just double checking that all the seals are good. Now, this is only a 40 watt soldering iron. Uh, if you've got a stronger one, just wrap a bit of tin foil around the, the head of it. Beeswax doesn't require much heat to melt. Now, it does look a little rough. It's really to do with how it plays. That's what I'm more interested in, because you don't get to see that part naturally enough. So I'm just going to trim up, you know, bits and pieces, so the little bits of wax don't get in the reeds. Ah, uh, yes!